The opposite of diversity is university. That is the topic of tonight's byline. We hear that students go to university to get their minds opened, expand their horizons. Oh, I wish that were true. Now, we've long heard of students who, well, they figure out early on, just tell the professor what they want to hear, answer even opinion questions. With the prof's opinion, and you'll get a great mark. And that's bothersome. But what's been happening for the last several years is that students and student governments are trying to shut down free speech, the free exchange of ideas, and make sure only their views are heard. Well, on Monday at Carleton University here in Ottawa, a large board dubbed the Free Speech Wall and placed there by the Carleton Students for Liberty was ripped down by a young man that calls himself a human rights activist. Arun Smith is likely enjoying his 15 minutes of fame and his chance to showcase his totalitarian mindset where he and a few others decide what proper thought and speech are. Smith said that he did this because he, f he saw free speech, the free speech wall, as an act of violence. Here's Smith appearing on The Source with Ezra Levant. So what percentage of people have to agree before we can silence a dissenter? Well, we don't have to operate on percentages. We have to operate on effect and harm to marginalized communities. Oh, it's hard to believe that this is one of our educated young men. This fellow in his seventh year of university, apparently, well, apparently he's on the same education plan as Bluto Blutarski from Animal House. You're out. Finished at Faber. Expelled. I want you off this campus at 9 o'clock Monday morning. Christ. Seven years of college down the drain. Now, in his time at university, I'd like to say that Mr. Smith hasn't even grasped the basics of the language, because when you hear what he has to say and then look at his actions, they don't match. Here's part of his campaign video to get elected to the Carleton student government. He clearly says he wants every voice heard. I want to let you know that I am here so that I can make a difference in terms of creating inclusive, open spaces that are safe spaces, where every voice is empowered and where every student's voice is heard. So if he wants every voice heard, why is he shutting down a free speech wall that was very supportive of his key issue, gay rights? Well, the answer lies in one of his other phrases, safe spaces. He said, I am here so that I can make a difference in terms of creating inclusive, open spaces that are safe spaces. That phrase, safe spaces, is the same language used by those that have wanted to shut down any protest, demonstration, or speech that doesn't support abortion. In the eyes of the best and brightest minds studying at Carleton University, safe spaces means places where proper views, the politically correct views, are not challenged. Remember, this is the university that shut down a pro-life club for having a demonstration that used graphic images. Now, I've been to Carleton's campus. All kinds of graphic images are seen on campus every day. All kinds of material offensive to some people is posted. But because this was about abortion, it was deemed to violate the safe space policy and students, including Ruth Lobo, were arrested. That student club was also denied funding by the student government and told they couldn't use student council space, which essentially shut them out of student life. The same has happened at universities all across Canada. Now here's why you should care about this. Even if you're not in university, you don't have kids in university or grandchildren in university, you need to care about this. These people, the Arun Smiths of the world and the folks on the student government that want to control speech they disagree with, will one day be running this country. Believe me, these folks will be the politicians, the bureaucrats and administrators that run our cities and towns, provincial and federal departments, and, and the malformation that their minds are undergoing right now. Well, that'll be carried over into their later life. Would you even recognize uh, Canada if these clowns were in charge? That's why these stories matter. This is why we need to name and shame them, shine a light onto their silliness. It's not only the right thing to do, our future depends on it. And that's the byline. When I, when I made that video, um, it was 8.30 in the morning, and I happened to omit two words at the end of that sentence. And, the la and those two words were, uh, for everyone except bigots. Some people would say you're bigoted, but I think you should have your say. Who decides who the bigot is, Arun? Well, I think it's a collective responsibility more than, everything, more than anything else, Ezra. Yeah. You can catch more of Arun Smith, if you dare, on The Source with Ezra Levant later on. Joining me now is the other side of that argument. Ian Cookshing is with the Carleton Students for Liberty, and uh, Ian, I hope I didn't butcher your name too much. 
Yeah, it's actually Ian Kokiang. Kokiang. Okay, see, I did butcher it a bit, and that's why I always ask. Ian, uh, you guys put up the free speech wall. That's correct. Um, what was your intent in doing this? You wanted to give everyone a voice? Well, we felt that uh, ideas were being monopolized by the, by the university or the student government, and we just wanted to create a venue where students can express themselves. Uh, all we were asking was that students be treated with the same, uh, under the same laws, uh, free speech laws, that they would otherwise be treated at had they not entered university. That actually, when they enter university, uh, a lot of uh, things that the government otherwise would never be allowed to do are, are permitted to be done onto students. And if, Such as? Well, um, the safe spaces, for instance, uh, shutting down um, uh, anything that is... Um, well, first of all, uh, a lot of the laws are not written. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, don't, don't worry about it. So um, you, you wanted everyone to have the same rights to free speech. And these safe spaces policies shut some people out. So you wanted this wall up. Students for Liberty is a fairly libertarian-minded organization, correct? Uh, it's completely libertarian. Okay, so that, that, you know, a lot of people put that on the right, some don't, but it's more on the right than on the collectivist mindset, I would say. So you would agree with me that most of the student body, at least the, the government, uh, student government, is very left-wing at Carleton, and you wanted to give a different voice. Uh, well, uh, I'm not, I'm not, I can't comment on that. Um, you know, definitely the student government is uh, more left-wing than... Uh, uh, it's quite obvious. Uh, you can't deny that. But as for a student body, I'm not really sure if it's... Well, yeah, are... What I meant was the, the student body politic. The guys that are running the show uh, at, at, at CUSA, the student uh, uh, organization, that, they are essentially left-wingers. Yeah, yeah, but that is implying that they, are, they have principles. In my opinion, a lot of them are, are just really narcissistic and uh, want to tell people how to live their lives. Okay, so a little while ago, there, just recently, there was a meeting, and they changed something. And I want to talk to you about this briefly, because this should upset anyone that wants um, free speech for all, that wants people treated the same. They, they had banned the pro-life groups because of their safe spaces policy, and then they you know, outright said you can't have funding, you can't use student union space. They changed the discrimination policy, though, didn't they? They got rid of outright discrimination, but they didn't replace it with, it, with anything much better. Explain that. Well, it certainly was an improvement. Instead of an indiscriminate ban on any club, we now have a censorship board, uh, which, which now uh, people can be the judges of what, uh, can be elected to be the judges of what's uh, censored and what's not censored. So while it's an improvement, uh, well, I find it a little bit um, authoritarian. And uh, in, 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 if this happened outside of university in the real world, it, people would definitely uh, be upset about a censorship board deciding uh, what's uh, what should be allowed and what shouldn't be allowed. You're a libertarian. That's correct. How happy would you be living in a country run on the principles that the Carleton student government is run? Or, but, and I'm asking on the principles that they run on, not these individuals, because maybe they'll change. But if they don't, and these sorts of people get into provincial government, they get into the federal government, and they're running Canada, what would that do to this country? Well, it would definitely be very uneconomical. Uh, and, well, if you, if you look at history, all of the uh, countries that have ever like, uh, played with censorship uh, as a knee-jerk re reaction to opposing views have all had terrible human rights records. And if Arun Smith uh, has been... Um, in Carleton for seven years studying human rights, he should be able to make that correlation uh, between human <laughs> Unfortunately, rights. Unfortunately, I don't and, think uh, he's doing a whole lot of studying there. Uh, thanks so much for joining us, Ian, and uh, best to you and uh, Students for Liberty. Email me your thoughts on this, byline at sunmedia.ca. <laughs>